kulingana na we hakuna hakuna mwingine kama wewe open hearts may you speak to us there is no other voice that we desire to hear from other than you we know that you're a God who keeps your word so pour your word in our hearts help us to find peace in you help us you to worship you in truth and in spirit and just come and take charge for it's in Jesus name we pray amen amen So we'll sing a song that just says, may we find peace in knowing that he is God, no matter what. Amen? Ah, yeah.
let your heart know that he is God. Amen. Amen. So we'll just sing a song that reminds us that he is ever faithful. He has never failed in our lives. What can we offer such a God? He has done so much for us. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all.
Davids, it's all in our hearts that attempts to raise us up to a place of exaltation. Conquer that pride, O Lord, so that you will be exalted. Everlasting Father, that is our prayer this morning. That you will be raised in this place. That your glory will be evident in this sanctuary. That, Lord, you will be uplifted. That your glory, Lord, will come forth and be evident in this place. Father, we remember those among us this morning that even though they are raising their voice, lifting you up, yet they are carrying a lot of weights. They are carrying burdens of loss, of pain brokenness of devastation. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ this morning that you will encourage those people in the name of Jesus Christ. We remember by name Honorable Ranguma. Father, we pray for him and his family in the name of Jesus Christ that you will comfort them, O oh God, in Jesus' name. What a loss, what a pain they are going through right now, God. I pray that you will come through for them in the name of Jesus Christ as they will be preparing Lord to receive the body of their beloved daughter I pray for the spirit of comfort I pray for comfort that comes from above to be upon them in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding father to be upon them in Jesus name father here are people that are sick that have sick people, loved ones, Lord, I want to pray for healing to be upon them in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for a spirit of restoration. We pray for restoration for our families in Jesus' name, for our marriages, for our businesses, for this country, oh God, this is a beloved nation. We pray, God, for reconciliation. We pray for restoration. We pray for peace for our beloved nation in Jesus name we thank you Jesus may I request all of us to answer this I'm going to read Psalm 136 and just answer by saying his love and do us forever I'm going to read that as we worship God this morning give thanks to the Lord for he is good his love and do us forever give thanks to the God of God's his love and do us forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. His love and do us forever. To him who alone does great wonders. For his love and do us forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. For his, his love, love and do us forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His, his love and do us forever. Who made the great lights. His love and do us forever. The sun to govern the day. His love endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever. And brought Israel through the midst of it. His love, love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. His love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness. His love endures forever. To him who struck down great kings. His love endures forever. And killed mighty kings. His love endures forever. Zion, king of the Amorites. Love and do us and Oak, king of Bashan, love and do us and gave their land as an inheritance. It's love and do us forever. an inheritance to his servant Israel. It's love and do us forever. He remembered us in our low estate. It's love and do us forever. and freed us from our enemies. It's love and do us forever. He gives food to every creature. It's love and do us forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, what an 
a great honor to worship that God that his love endures forever God never changes his love never changes it is as the Bible says his mercies are new every morning those who are watching us online we welcome you to join us in this beautiful day as we worship the Lord I'm going to welcome our brother who is going to lead us in a congregational hymn as we continue in our worship today amen this was an emblem of suffering and shame Hills far away to go. Oh, the hill far away stood a gold ragged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross. a wondrous attraction for me to God. Uh-huh. 
bless you. Be seated. Thank you, President Mission Team. Mbalozi Choir, if you come, so that you give us one song. How be true to this rugged cross. God bless you.
Amen. Amen. All right. Tuwape tena uh, shangwe. Thank you very much, uh, Mabalozi Choir. That's beautiful. Indeed, the cross is the power of God for our salvation. I want to ask us kindly, let's be upstanding as we read the word of God. Na kumkaribisha mnenaji wa siku ya leo. Our reading this morning is from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 5, verse 14 to 21. 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 14 to 21. The Ministry of Reconciliation. 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 14 to 21. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. He died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Verse 21. God made him who had no sin to be seen for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. May the Lord bless his word. Our speaker this morning is Reverend Dr. Stephen Mairori, who is our senior pastor. Karibu sana for the word of God. Thank you. Praise the Lord, church. It's indeed a joy to stand before you to bring God's word. Uh, how many of us are glad and thank God that somebody sometimes back came to you and shared the gospel of Christ with you? At least that made a difference in your life. When that person took time to come and share the good news to you, it totally transformed. For me, it was a major transformation, a major change. As though you are going this way and things turn around for better. And so we are always very grateful when we think of what happened in our lives and what it means for you as a person to know Jesus in your journey here on earth. Today we would like to look at a topic called in to be sent out. Called in to be sent out. In addition to the message, to the word of God that has been read to us, I'd like to read John 17, 18. John 17, 18 says, As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. I repeat it again. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. When I did ask the question, how many are grateful that someone shared the gospel? I saw many hands, and I think accurately so to say that if I ask the question, how many of us here are Christians, I would see a lot of hands going up. And what I mean is that you are just not a Christian because you come to church, and not because you have just been baptized. Not that you try to live a good life, but what I mean is you've repented of your sins, by faith acknowledge our Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and his son, and God's son, accepted his death on the cross as the penalty 
for your sins and totally committed your life to him as your Lord and Savior. If you feel that is you, then you are okay. But if you feel, you know, I think I'm just a Christian because I come to church or I was baptized when I was young, I would pray that the Lord helps you because Christianity or knowing Jesus is by making a personal decision. And you experience the change. By the way, I, I met a friend who was struggling saying, I really don't know whether I have Jesus or I'm not. I go to church, I've been there, and I ask, do you remember a day that personally you accepted him into your life and he totally changed you and you had an experience in you that was life transforming? And of course, it was not true and we were able to do that. If that is you, I would like to ask my second question. And the question is, how many of us here seated consider themselves to be missionaries? How many of us seated here consider themselves to be missionaries? And before you raise your hand or make, say your answer, let me define what a missionary is. A missionary is a person sent on a mission, a send out one. Especially for us, the church, we do know that the people that are set aside and sent, we call them missionaries. But in reality, as we look at God's word, being a Christian is being a missionary. Being a Christian and being a missionary is the same thing. In other words, you cannot say, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus. And you would say, I'm not a missionary. What the scripture tells us here, in John 17, 18, Christ himself was sent by the Father as a missionary here on earth, says, I'm finishing my work. Just as you have done it to me, send me to bring the good news and went through death and resurrection so that those who believe in him can be reconnected to God. He says, I am now sending them into the world. A person who is sent out on a mission always pays attention to what the one that sent him once done and is always there for the mission of the one who has sent him. All of us seated, those of you who have accepted Christ as your personal savior, you represent God. It's the mission of God in the world. And so through Christ, God in his own wisdom decided that I will not send angels to carry out my mission. But the people who will carry out my mission are those who have loved me, who have accepted my word, and who have experienced uh, my forgiveness. I'm sure probably some of you have been ambassadors in other countries. We know here in Kenya we have the embassy of the US, it's a US mission. We have an embassy of Canada, it's a mission of Canada in Canada, and all the other countries that have their missions here. The person who is sent into the country to represent that country do not have their own business. They are focused on the business of the one who has sent them. That is their country, that is their president or prime minister, whoever is the leader of that nation, has a mission that wants to be achieved in Kenya, and so the person then in the country will speak for that mission, will do things that will not embarrass that mission, will always represent the mission at its best so that the image of that country is well represented. Church, God, the creator of the universe, has sent us on a mission. You and I are ambassadors of Christ. Sometimes we take it light. Being an ambassador of a country has some prestige and uh, honor. 
but being an ambassador of God, the creator of the universe, has much honor. And we sang in the song that one day we will be crowned for what we do. Do you always see yourself as an ambassador of Christ in your workplace, in your home, amongst friends? A study was done in the U.S. trying to see churches because they, they were wondering in the early church, the church grew faster. And it was not by probably inviting friends to the church or by crusades or, you know, those uh, going out in the market, but it was by the believers themselves sharing their faith to their fellow friends because they knew that I'm an ambassador to Christ and one of my roles is to speak for him. And so they shared the gospel. And so as the study was done and they found out that that's no longer the case. A lot of the Christians are like the submarines. They, 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 they just want to be under the water. They don't want to stick out their neck in their workplace or in any other forum that they are in. They would rather in any conversation tell somebody, oh, our church is a very good church. Would you like to come? But they, they would not probably identify themselves as born again and share that and share the message that goes with that. Church, God himself through Christ has called each one of us to missions. Missions here and missions out. Missions here and missions out. Just, I know it's COVID time, but turn to your neighbor and just say, I'm an ambassador of Christ. I am an ambassador of Christ. So whatever station that God has put you in, please represent his mission. Represent his mission. Paul says that very well in 2 Corinthians, that because of the work that Christ has done, and I, 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 I'll read it again. It says in verses 20, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. I say this because today is our AICMD day. We, we, are, we are praying for the missionaries. We are supporting missionaries in AIC across the country. We remember those that have left us to go to difficult areas to take God's word. And because of that culture, we have thought probably the missionaries are those ones only in those difficult areas. Yes, they are missionaries, but you and I are missionaries as well. And together, we can advance the kingdom of God from where God has blessed us. The second thing that this passage brings out is we've been sent to the world. As missionaries, we've been sent to the world. John 17, 8 says that, 18 says that very clearly. As you send me into the world, I have sent them into the world. As you've sent me into the world, I've sent them into the world. Now, our world is very complex. One has to understand the mission field well in order to reach it. But even before you do that, you have to understand clearly your mission. What are you supposed to do? Who are you? What are you supposed to do? And then the second step, understand the world that you have been sent as a missionary. We live in, our world, in a world that has a belief system that elevates material things than the things of God. A world that has blinded people so that people, instead of worshiping God, are worshiping actually the creation and the things that God has given us. For some, as we serve as ambassadors, materialism or the need to have great possession is a major driver. It's why they live. They want to acquire more. 
and you ask the question, how much is enough? The Bible says that contentment with godliness is great gain, but that is not true to many people. All that they want is to acquire more. The truth, church, is nothing will satisfy. Material wealth will never satisfy. We were not created for it. It's wealth, creation is a very good thing. To have wealth is a very good thing. But we have to look at it from the eyes of God. God is the one who gives wealth. And why does he do so? It is because it's a tool that he wants to use. Wealth is at our disposal for the mission that God has given us. But the world that we live in has turned that around so that the mission for the people that we are to reach is if I can get this and this and this, and you've seen many, they go to large extents trying to acquire because it never satisfies. You ask the question, how much is enough? But that is because they have reversed the purpose of God for wealth. It is meant to be used for the mission of God here on earth. For others, it's education. Education is a major driver for their existence. It gives them significance, it gives them prestige, and uh, they say, as I get higher and higher, I get to be respected. But have you asked the question, what happens when that is taken away, and even wealth, when it is taken away? Will you still have a reason to live? Will you still have a reason to exist? In fact, a story, true story of a professor that we were in seminary. He, he had a PhD, very, 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 very highly learned writer, and then all of a sudden he developed um, a disease in, 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 uh, mentally. And uh, he kept on deteriorating. And at one point uh, in my studies, I had a conversation with him. He couldn't use his education anymore. And uh, he told me, actually, I wish I can give you my PhD <laughs> if there was a way to do that so that you can use it, <laughs> because I can't use it anymore. And he said, though it is taken away, I'm so glad that the reason I'm here on earth is because of Jesus. Praise God. He was rooted deeply in Christ, that it didn't matter what he had acquired in life. As long as he was connected to God and still alive to worship him, to do his will, he said that was enough. The things that we sometimes live for and the things that sometimes the world has made us to believe we are here for can be taken away from us. If you are living for power and prestige, that too can be taken away. If you are living for pleasure, that too can be taken away. So, the world is still searching for something more important, significant. Why am I here on earth? And that is the question you and I who are missionaries who have been sent to this world by Christ to reach should answer. And that's the message that we do. The first problem is we have a problem with God. And men everywhere and women, everyone needs reconciliation with God. And that's why Paul puts it very clear that God through Christ has brought the message of reconciliation so that when human beings and their creator are reconciled, there is peace and satisfaction in their hearts. Praise God. They experience that my existence is for him. All these other things are just blessings and tools in life that we can use for the kingdom and the mission of God. And so Paul makes it very clear. Uh, he tells us that because of what Christ has done, Everyone who comes in contact with him, he says, if anyone is in Christ, it's actually, I love the NIV, it says, the new creation has come. Praise God. <laughs> the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. 
something happens in our lives, a regeneration by the Holy Spirit, that we get connected to the Savior, and we now understand we are here for him, and we can serve him faithfully, and we can rejoice with him, whether we have much, whether we have less, whether we are educated, whether we are not, whether we are powerful or not, we are here for Christ and his mission. The Bible tells us and teaches us that when somebody meets Christ, even the hunger of life is gone. Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. And when you get that bread, it takes care of you. It takes care of your life. He says, I'm the light of the world. If you are not seeing clearly and understanding things, when you are in me, I will be your light. And actually, when we believe in him, he says, rivers of life will flow from within. In other words, we become source of life and water of life to many other people. Christ, church, has sent us into the world. The world needs Jesus. Here in Nairobi, in Marsabit, in Orma, this is a mission field for him. What are you doing for the kingdom? The king who has sent you as his ambassador to this world, what are you doing? Are you sticking out your neck? Or are you, as Reverend Mete would say, chini <laughs> amaji? If you are not sticking out his neck, the call of Christ today to you is just as the Father sent him. He's sending you out. Stand out and be counted. The third thing we learn is the message to the world is that of reconciliation. The message to the world is that of reconciliation. Reconciling men and women to God. But we do it in two ways. By word, by proclamation. And in Luke 4, 18 through 20, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Christ was on a mission and in declaring his agenda to the world, he said, I have been sent by the Father and the Spirit of God has anointed me to do these following things. And if you can see, most of them is to proclaim, to proclaim the good news to the poor, the freedom for the prisoners, and the recovery of the sight to the blind, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You and I have the same mission of proclamation, to share the good news of Christ. How do you do that? And I have I've struggled with this, and we, we did the four spiritual laws here, but one of the things that you can share in proclaiming what God, who God is and what he has done is just your story. It's just your story. Just to say, when I met Christ, this is what he's done for me. And I know that he can do for you. And when you're reading your scripture, you would be able to have a verse or so to share. The second thing we do as we share the message of reconciliation is we do it through deeds, through our works, through action. In Luke 24, 19, this is what the Bible says. What things, he asked, and then they answered about Jesus of Nazareth. They replied, that is, he was a prophet, powerful in word, and deed before God and all people. Praise God. That this Jesus, who was a prophet, was powerful in word, in, in sharing, but also in deed. As I see Milimani, my prayer is as we think about missions, as we look at 
the end of the year and beginning next year as the Lord leads us greatly in missions, we'll do it in those two ways. We'll share in word. We'll share God's word. My prayer is each one of us who is an ambassador of Christ will be able to do that to those that God has bring, brought within your, your, your presence or your sphere of influence. We'll be able to have teams that will go out open air. We'll have teams that will go out share the gospel. We'll also have teams that will go out to the outside areas which are difficult, which we call mission areas as well to share the word of God. But as we share, we want also to show the love of God. And that's why when Jesus met a sick person, he didn't tell them just get saved, after all you will die, die. He healed that person, praise God. He met some that were blind, that they didn't have sight. He knew that their lifespan is short, but he healed them and gave them eyesight. He did something to change their status. So when we think of missions, we are thinking of action. What do we do? And I borrowed some ideas from Rick Warren in their approach to missions. And this is how we view missions done by ordinary Christians taking the gospel, the love of Christ to the ends of the earth. We look at the word missions, we will have to change probably in our mind and thinking when we, we talk of missions. So as a missioner, when I think of missions, this is what we have in mind. That is, the, they use the word peace, an acronym, and gave it, uh, they, 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 they used the noble word peace and gave it meaning. So the first P is planting churches and promoting reconciliation. And this will address the issue of spiritual emptiness or darkness. The truth is our world is very dark. The world that Jesus met or the world that Jesus uh, in, in his time operated in was very dark. People were spiritually empty. And so he was able to bring in the kingdom of God and the light that accompanies it so that people would be able to experience the freedom that comes from understanding that. Everywhere our church goes and plants churches. And you can testify in your rural areas or wherever you are. Where a church is planted, hope comes to that community. Because when people accept Jesus, they are no longer the same. It changes. When missionaries came those years before we knew God's word, it brought change and has affected our lives. So as we go out, we take the word of God that will transform those communities. Some communities live in great fear, and I tell you, serious fear. Some are actually ruled by witchcraft. Others, definitions, uh, uh, people, people actually, all of them, would, I would say, would be witchcraft, and, and many other things that has put people in bondage that unless God's word comes to set them free, those people will live in bondage because of what the enemy has done. You and I have been given the mandate to do missions, and one of it is plant churches and promote reconciliation. By allowing those people to be reconciled to God, they become free, and they have the freedom out of those fears. The second is equip servant leaders. And this deals with the problem that we do have of self-serving leadership. Jesus taught us to wash the feet of others. The world has seen enough bad leaders. And we do know that everything rises or falls on leadership. We need servant leaders 
who know that their role is to serve God by serving his people. Our prayer is that those that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb and are in senior positions of leadership, that they will model the servant leadership that Jesus has taught us that they will begin coaching younger leaders to show them that this is how we are meant to lead. We are meant to empower people. We are meant to blossom them. Our role is not to be a boss. Our role is to use the position and power that God has given us to lift others up so that the potential that God has put in our people can be experienced and this world would be a better place for all of us when we do that. The third thing that we do when we go to mission is to assist the poor. Church, poverty is bad. It is dehumanizing. It has to be fought by all. I know for some of us, we may use our positions to actually uh, hold government responsible to eradicate poverty, to do everything. You see, when Jesus met an angry person who, was, who didn't have he fed, he fed, and actually it is a standard by which that we will be judged in the end if we do not feed the poor or uh, the hungry. We are to assist the poor. While government has its part, as a church we also have a part. And our part is to find ways we can encourage people who are struggling to assist them to come up so that they can be able to meet their needs. It shouldn't completely make any one of us happy when someone is suffering. I remember my wife and I do some work up in, in, in Mount Elgon, and one time we were helping build a house for an old lady who, who, you know, when it rains, the water just comes through. And so we were doing a few of those. And some of the people that accompanied us, who I thought uh, would be very happy for this, were actually talking quietly, saying, why are these people wasting their time helping this poor person? This one will never be helped. <laughs> they should be helping uh, those who are able to help themselves. In other words, if you would hear in the vernacular, it, it, it cuts your heart deep. Because their heart is not to assist the poor. They are thinking about themselves. That if I had this iron sheets, I would have done one, two, three. Church, God has called us to help those most vulnerable the most poor. And the fourth is when we go out, we care for the sick because disease is a problem. Jesus healed where he went. I attended a certain uh, meeting in, 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 in Uganda and the presenter said 80% of the sicknesses around the world are preventable. It's just by washing your hands, having clean water, that keeps away typhoid, eating fruits, uh, clean compound to keep mosquitoes away and the rest. Basically saying if the church were to reach out and educate communities that live in poverty, how to keep away diseases, you would be able to keep away 80%. And this, the 20% who needs a doctor, we can always, by God's grace, help a clinic and have the doctors amongst us to do that. Then the last thing that uh, recurrent shares is when we think of missions, we are thinking of educating the next generation to deal with illiteracy. Jesus was a master teacher. He taught us about life. Education opens opportunities. And as his children, we can help many to unlock their future. The potential is great as we use education as a tool. So when we talk about mission, let's think holistic, because Jesus did it. The temptation sometimes is to think about the first part of just sharing, but we've got to go deeper into touching and changing their lives. So may the Lord help us, all of us who are here, who are ambassadors of Christ, and have been called by him, as Jesus told his father, as you've sent me, I am now sending them. My prayer today is you will receive that call from God, from Christ, because he wants to reconcile the world to himself through Christ, 
who was sent to do that work of reconciliation. You and I have been given that mandate. What are you doing to advance the kingdom of God? Are you taking your work seriously as an ambassador? Are you taking your work seriously as a missionary? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful we've heard your word. Jesus, you left your comfort in heaven to come to this broken world so that you can bring the message of reconciliation. That because sin has separated us from God, through you, we can now be reconciled to God. And church, if you are here and you are someone who says, personally, I don't remember when I gave my life to Christ and you want to do that to be reconciled to God today, I want to give you that opportunity so that you can accept him. Is there anyone who would like to accept Jesus that is here? Would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. Anybody just raise it to God. You are not raising to anyone. Just raise it to God and I want to pray with you. Anybody who wants to take that opportunity and accept Christ as their personal? Thank you for that hand. We've seen the hand. Thank you. Any other hand who would like to do that? Anyone else who would like to accept Christ? And as we pray, if you are saying, I have not taken my missionary role seriously as an ambassador, I want to do that from today, to commit to be an ambassador of Christ here on earth and to do his mission. If that's your prayer, raise your hand as well. We'll pray with you. Thank you for those hands. Just raise it to him. We are not raising it to anyone. Thank you. And Father, we thank you for your word and the commitment. For those that have raised their hand to accept you as their personal savior, would you bless them and Lord encourage them to grow and to walk in the newness of life. For those that have raised their hands to say, I'm taking my role as a missioner, as a missionary, as an ambassador very seriously, I pray Lord that you lift them up as well and Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit enable them to live to their commitment today. Bless us all and continue guiding us for it's in Christ's name I pray and God's people say it. May the Lord bless you all and now I welcome Reverend William. Thank you. Mimi ni pungue we we ongezeke Mimi ni pungue It is so easy for us to talk about the reconciliation. That reconciliation that God has given unto us through his son Jesus Christ. How can we be able to implement the peace plan if we are not reconciled to him? God has invited us for this great ministry of reconciliation that we can be able to be reconciled to him and that is why he says be reconciled to this God and even now we reflect on this great reconciliation not only did God reach out to reconcile man to himself but he also sought to reconcile man to each other these will be able to help us that we can be able to say when Paul said to the church in Ephesus Ephesians chapter 2 verses 14 that Christ is our peace he has reconciled us to each other and therefore there is no Jew neither Gentile he has broken the hostility between the two you know why you still have a friction between one community and the other It's because the two communities are not reconciled to Christ 
do you understand why you have hostility between you and your neighbor a husband and a wife a parent to a child a tenant to a landlord uh, subject to the administration is because we are not reconciled to Christ and that is why we want to make an appeal that not only did God come to reconcile us to himself he also came that we can be reconciled to each other but thirdly he also came that we may be reconciled to ourselves so that we may be able to increase our self image we can be able to have a better perspective of who we are when we have to view ourselves exactly the way God views us the way God loves us we love ourselves the same way so that we can be able to have a sense of self-worth self-appreciation the reason why we hate ourselves is because we have not been reconciled to ourselves and therefore today church as we celebrate the Holy Communion it is an opportunity that every one of us has an opportunity to be reconciled number one to God so do not be here Sunday after Sunday and when the greater congregation participates in the Holy Communion you are amazed wondering what is it all about we want to let you know that you can be part of this great journey be reconciled to God and so as I will be asking my fellow pastors and elders that we prepare to dispense of the elements of the Holy Communion please be reconciled to God because this reconciliation is going to help you to be reconciled to your fellow man and neighbor and humanity and finally you are going to be reconciled to yourself this is a great appeal that we continue to make because we are persuaded that this great work is doable as the elders and the leadership of the church prepares for the Holy Communion we will be singing this song but let it not be business as usual remember this is an opportunity for us to be reconciled to that one God Kijito cha uta kaso liza be kushwa umu namsi fuwa na kwa iyo ni be pata uta kaso kiji. Kijito Kijito Cha Uta Kaso Nizame Kushwa Umo Na msifu Kwa Na kwa Hiyo Nibe Wata Uta Kaso Yukijito
participate, partake of the Holy Communion and has been bypassed, please just raise up your hand, you will be ministered to. Thank you. Thank you in the balcony, it has been able to be served. Any person among us, just raise up your hand and you shall be facilitated. Thank you. Thank you. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Church, our participation, partaking of the Holy Communion, it is not an exercise in futility. It is an act of memorance. We remember what the Lord has been able to do unto us. So even as I invite us to partake of it, may we be able to always remember the work that Christ did on the cross, reconciling us to himself. Shall we partake together? Lord, we want to thank you. 
that as you call us to remember, we can only be able to remember of something that took place. You died on the cross for the sake of our sins, and this we shall be forever grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 25, the Bible says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this, wherever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Church, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Christ shed his blood on the cross, uh, so as to reconcile us to himself for the forgiveness of our sins shall we be able to partake together Lord even in the taking of the cup and the element of bread we want to thank you for the complete work of Christ on the cross to reconcile us to God to reconcile us to each other and to reconcile us to ourselves we will continue to pray that every time as we partake of these elements we are always reminded of that great work and may we continue to be ambassadors of Christ doing the ministry of reconciliation this is our prayer in Jesus name we pray Amen. Na kwa hiyo dime pata utakaso kitito kitito cha utakaso biza bekuoswa humo nasi. Amen. 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 All right, so we are going to worship the Lord by listening to a few announcements. And um, Hill Voices, you'll be preparing to come forward in a few minutes. So, Hill um, Media Team, please run the announcements. Welcome to today's announcement. I'm Victoria Amunga. AIC Ladies Fellowship is inviting all ladies to participate in the Ladies Week starting 2nd to 10th October. Now we have various exciting activities from fellowship to Zumba to aerobics, visitation to special groups and pastors visitation. So be sure to take part in the Ladies Week under the theme Women on a Mission drawn from the book of Matthew 28, 18 to 20. See you then. All the men in the house, your monthly fellowship will be taking place here at the AIC Milimani, Nairobi, this Tuesday, 5th of October from 5.30 p.m. The topic will be men and health, handled by one of the leading counseling psychologists in Kenya, Joseph Kero. Men are invited to attend physically because there will be no live streaming since critical elements of a men's health will be discussed. See you then. Ladies and gentlemen, whether at the family, church or marketplace, you have influence and your leadership matters. That is why there is a constant need to keep sharpening our leadership skills. For that noble reason, International Christian Ministries Kenya invites you to join tens of thousands of curious, growth-minded, change-driven men and women like you for the 2021 Premier Leadership Event, the Global Leadership Summit. 
This will take place on the 14th and 15th of October 2021, broadcasted live from Sitam Valley Road. Some of the world-class leadership faculty to feature include Mr. Justice Daniel Musinga, President of the Court of Appeal of Kenya, Ms. Ibukun Awosika, Chair, First Bank of Nigeria, Bishop Dr. David Oginde, Archbishop Dr. Eliud Wabukala, Albert Tate, Jamie Lima, Bianca Juarez, among others. Registration is five US dollars per person. Please do mark the dates and register at the church office. Remember, you have influence and your leadership matters. Worship is powerful. Worship unites. Worship heals. Worship restores. Worship comforts. Worship refreshes. Worship empowers. Worship teaches. Again, worship is powerful. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. AIC Milmani Worship Team presents to you the Hallelujah Chorus. Junge nasi jumapili tarehe 31 Oktoba mwaka huu wakati wa ibada, wakati ndio huu wa kuabudu kwa kweli na roho. For those of our members who would want to solemnize their marriages in order to serve the Lord freely and obtain marriage certificates, AIC Milimani Nairobi invites you for the mass wedding which will be held on the 20th of November. For all the details, please call or visit the church office. To the parents with young ones who have not been dedicated to the Lord, there will be a child dedication service on the 28th of November. Please register your child at the church office. Uh, the wedding of Mercy, Kialo, and Festus Ndeti. The wedding will take place on 16th of October, 2021, at AIC Milimani, and thereafter to an optional, optional um, reception at the same place at AIC Milimani. Should anybody have any reason whatsoever that can stop this wedding, uh, please say it now or forever hold your silence. Uh, if you have any reason why Masi Kialo and Festus Ndeti should not be married, please uh, see any of us in the pastoral team and um, the Lord will uh, bless you, you know. Um, it's painful, but that's your responsibility, you have to say it. Um, is Festus and Masi here with us today? All right, there is Festus at the back and the balcony. That says uh, most likely he's a member of our youth. And um, Mercy is right here. They are seated apart. Very soon they'll be sitting together. All right, a round of applause for Mercy and Festus. Amen. That's the second announcement. And the final announcement is uh, the wedding of Mercy Muinde and Abed Musioki. The wedding will take place on 9th of October 2021 at AIC Milimani, followed by a reception at AIC Milimani, optional reception at AIC Milimani. Should anybody have any reason why Marcy and Abed uh, should not be married, please say it now or forever hold your silence. Anybody, please, if you have any reason, please see any of us, the pastoral team, for that reason. This is a third announcement. Is Masi and Abed here? Masi Muinde and Abed Musioki. I believe they're here today because they have, um, where? All right, both of them are seated close together because the wedding is just one week away. Um, a round of applause for Masi and Abed. <laughs> Amen. All right, so today they'll be having a pre-wedding um, service and a special offering collection 
downstairs at the church hall after this service. So please, you're welcome to come bless them as they prepare for their wedding. All right, so for the Global Leadership Summit, just one word, I want to say that all of us are encouraged to register. Um, this is a very important event. And so leadership, you've seen the caliber of uh, people that will be um, speaking that day. The service is going to be broadcast from um, Sitam Valley Road. Um, our very own Reverend Dr. Stephen Mairori is a key leader in the Global Leadership Summit. And we want to invite all of us to participate. Please share this opportunity also at your workplaces. Invite your colleagues and friends to register. It's only five hundred shillings and you can register through the church uh, pay bill 809-109 and write, indicate there it is GLS 21. May the Lord bless us. I hope to see all of us. I'll, I'll be there. So God bless you. Karibuni sana, this beautiful group. As you bless the Lord, we are going to give um, uh, tithe and offering. Today is missions day. So please let's give generously towards missions. Just make sure that you indicate that it is for missions. Uh, if it is for church projects, indicate its projects. If it's um, special offering or thanksgiving, just indicate. The pay bill is 809109. If you want to give also, um, if, um, the baskets are here. Karibu sana to, uh, to give as we serve the Lord. Karibu, God bless you.
Amen. Amen. Another round of applause for the Hill Voices. It's beautiful, beautiful. I want to recognize the visitors with us this uh, afternoon. Uh, let's start from the balcony. Maybe you're worshiping with us for the first time today. Please, would you stand up so that we can recognize you? Any visitor upstairs? All right. Santa Sana on this other side, near the Hill Voices. Wageni, all right, from this side, if you're worshiping, all right. This one upstairs, Karibu Sana. If you can stand, please just stand. Just stand so that um, some, somebody who is going to come and recognize you, some group there as well, Karibu Sana AIC Milimani, all right, here in the middle. You're worshiping with us for the first time today, please. All right. Okay, on this side, you're worshiping with us for the first time. Thank you. There is a gentleman here. There's a lady at the back as well. Asante sana. Karibuni. Karibuni sana to AIC Milimani. If you're here, maybe you're on transit, uh, please pass your greetings to your home church. But if you've come to Nairobi, you found a church. Karibu sana to AIC Milimani. It's a home. It's a family church. Welcome to worship with us uh, next Sunday. It's good to see you. Uh, before we pray for the offering and then invite Mr. Kieti to give us a short report, um, I want to read um, a benediction here because we are actually basically concluding our service, but we are going to request about 10 or 15 minutes of your time for a very special report from the finance committee. That's the audit report. It is not going to be broadcast, but um, the, uh, we're going to consume it here. And um, it's going to be very brief, but if you have any question, please feel free to talk to Mr. Kieti, the church administrator or the senior pastor, and you can get a full report. Uh, Romans chapter number 16. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles or the people groups might come to the obedience that comes from faith to the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for ministering to us today. Thank you for reminding us of our responsibility as Christians, people that you have commissioned. You've called us so that, and you can send us, you empowered us so that for a specific task in this world, you know, to proclaim the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, to equip the saints, you know, to preach the gospel, to help those who are sick, you know, to serve the poor, to do all the ministries of reconciliation and to be ambassadors of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I pray that, Lord, you will commission us this week you know, in our different spheres of influence, in different spaces, our offices, our businesses, you know, those of us who are in colleges, either teaching or studying, I want to pray, Lord, that we are going to represent the Lord Jesus Christ in our work, in, in those uh, different uh, spaces, oh God. Thank you for this great church. I pray that, Lord, you'll be glorified in this place and in our lives as well. Thank you for the offering that has been given today for your ministry. I pray that you're going to bless it, O oh Lord, as it serves your purpose. Bless us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause as we welcome Mr. Kieti, a church treasurer, and who is uh, 